Welcome to the Pioneer Agronomy Update. We have made our way to Amenia, North Dakota. We're at Rush River Seed and Chemicals. Sean Nelson with us. Nice to have a beautiful day. Yes, we'll take the sunshine. So give me an idea in this, in this area. Uh, what's the area you cover and, and what's the uh, conditions? Yeah, so we've got two locations, Amenia and Hunter. We uh, cover from Castleton up to Mayville. And I'd say this year, the further south is maybe a little bit better off than up north, kind of that northwestern corridor of what we cover, Clifford, Galesburg, um, up to Mayville, maybe over to Page. That's pretty wet right now. So uh, how's that been? Obviously, it's, this isn't an, a normal season trying to get seed out. Yeah, so this has been a challenging year for all of us, the, the farmers, ourselves. Typically, by May 1st, we have all of our corn sitting on the growers' farms, and this year was one, it's such a touch and go year that, you know, hey, why don't we hold off? We might need to early up maturities. And then as each field opens up, we're getting them or they're coming to pick up the, the corn seed that they need. So, I mean, we're chipping away at it, but it's slowly but surely. But weather like this definitely helps fields open up and get things moving along. So I'm expecting to be pretty busy the next 10 days or so. Well, let's keep it going. Appreciate yeah. the chance to connect, sure. Sean. Thank you very much. Sean Nelson with us from Rush River Seed and Chemical. Jesse Mock with us, field agronomist from Pioneer. And Jesse, uh, again, we're making some progress here in, in this part of the valley. Yeah, yeah, it's it's hit or miss. You know, you get west into the south, it's pretty slow. There's a pocket in here that, that's going. So uh, slowly but surely, um, we're getting in the field. Uh, planting conditions are uh, challenging at best. You know, uh, fields being re ready this late in the year is a little subjective. So we are facing some challenges, you know, once we get into the field and, and seeing some issues, you know, arise as, as after the planters leave the field. So give me an idea. You've got an example out, out in this particular field. What, what are we seeing here, Jesse? Yeah, so this is pretty common, especially when we get into some of these heavy soils and and, and kind of some of the things we're seeing and, and maybe some planter adjustments you can make. I got two locations flagged here. Uh, this this is just shoot down right in here, Claire. Uh, this is kind of a, you know most of this field is a, a heavier Fargo clay. Um, this this piece of ground is tiled. Uh, we hit it once with the pro-till. Obviously the sub the subsurface moisture is really good. Uh, but this is a little bit lighter pocket in the field. You can see some of the you can see some of the gravel in there. Uh, you know it's a little bit lighter. So in these particular conditions, you know kind of scraping away. You got your furrow here. You know you're, you're digging up, and what you can see is. You know, within there, um, it's actually, that's from my spade, but, you know, it breaks apart pretty well. So that's a pretty nice seed bed. We're seeing corn getting down in here. Uh, this one was planted five days ago. You can see that, that it, we're just starting to just see a little bit of emergence. So, you know, this is this is a pretty good seed bed, but this, this isn't a lot of the area of the field. And I'm going to move you over to this location next, what I'm seeing a lot of, and could cause some issues here in a little bit. We'll walk over there. All right. Again, Jesse Mock with us from Pioneer Field Agronomist. We're going to slip uh, across the field here and uh, give us an idea what are, what are we seeing here, Jesse? So, so literally probably 20 feet away, um, we move into a heavier soil. You can see our trash whippers. We're look, working a little bit harder here, a little depression. Um, so it's a different soil type. And you can notice here, um, you know, our closing wheels weren't quite doing a good job. So, so we're seeing a little bit open furrow. For the most part, it's closed because you're at two or so inches, but, but this is, this is, in the fine example of sidewall compaction and sidewall smearing. Uh, so if you dig down, you know, where your seed trench is, you're gonna notice as I lift up here, um, you can see that corn seed right there and look and see the sidewall, how hard it is right here. You know, that's that's a pretty classic case of what I'm seeing. You know, that's, that's really hard. You know, it doesn't even wanna break. That sidewall is tight and hard. So, um, you know, that, that causes issues later in the year. Uh, you, you look at that, uh, if we dry out, that becomes really hard, and then our, our roots don't, don't want to form laterally. They, they try to drive down, and, and it can cause some issues later in the year. Uh, so I, I, I told the grower yesterday, I don't think he was very happy to, to hear this, but after we get this run of corn here this week, uh, we are, we are going to need a little rain for forgiveness uh, of what's going on. Uh, so a couple things, you know, in these two fields, we had a couple here, uh, just adjustments on your planter. Uh, you know, if you've worked it twice um, and, and you've got a big dry layer, kind of clumpy, uh, in some cases we've had to set the trash whippers a little bit deeper uh, so we could get into moisture. Um, in cases where uh, maybe we got across it once, um, you know, at, at that point, if you got the ability to, to adjust down pressure, uh, we, we did it in this field starting off at 100 and I think we ended up at 30 adjusting down pressure. So really lightening the load when we're compacting that clay when we're going across it. 
a couple adjustments. Obviously, without some of this down pressure, we're not going to get the seeding depth. Uh, most importantly, we want good seeding depth and, and soil to moisture contact. So every field is different. Um, you know, we're late, but but when we see, you know, if we had a whole field like this with sidewall compaction, you know, you're looking anywhere from 20 to 40 percent yield loss if we dry out. Uh, so, so we still got to do a good job and, and take our time and get a good seed bed. You know, we're all in a rush of the season trying to get uh, every uh, every acre covered. It's important though, do just what you did, uh, get out behind that uh, planter and, and see what uh, what we're, what's happening out in that field. Yeah, it is, and I I, I, I there's real it. There, there's the realistic side of it too that we've just got so much to do uh, but yeah I, I think the best you can to realize especially when you have the ability to adjust your trash rippers or your down pressure you know just making sure every field you go into because the tillage is different depending on the timing uh, just taking the time you know 10-15 minutes to make sure your planters operating as best as possible in those fields. What kind of questions are you getting from growers for this uh, delayed season? Uh, you know, earlier on it was corn maturity. It seems like guys have kind of moved where they want to move. Um, and, and we've got some of the supply moved around. So, so some of those questions have disappeared and it's kind of moved to soybean maturity now. Uh, the, the biggest question probably this week is, okay, I, I'm thinking forward. You know, we're, we're working on corn. There's maybe some rain in the forecast. When, when do I adjust my soybean maturity? Um, and I always tell guys, you know, you kind of got a core range, you know, right here in, in uh, Amenia. You know, our core range is right around a 1.0. You know, if we get in early, we'll plant a 1.3. Our core range is in that 0.9, 1.0. I typically uh, push those maturities until about June 5th because our yield data supports longer maturities, no matter when you plant them, uh, yield more at the end. But it's all about the frost risk at the end. Are they, are they gonna mature? So, so, so that's gotta play in the factor. So I do push that core maturity for this area, you know, in 0.9, 1.0 till about June 5th. Um, and then I kind of make a switch, but I make a, a pretty good switch in that usually four to seven RM range. So if I'm a 1.0, you know, I'll move to an 0.5, an 0.3 type in there. Um, and that's kind of where we've seen, you know, that time date and the number of maturity you should jump, you know, at about that time period. Are we able to switch seed around at this point? Or? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's like anything, it takes time. We're backed up for transfers. You can imagine that yeah. the... I, we've we've been trying to move corn around and we can't get trucks under them so the reps themselves if they want it moved in a day they got to do it themselves so so if you're thinking out you know lead time always helps as the north is late they start to early up so o threes for example they'll push them for a while yet but you know maybe around june 5th those let go and then we got to go get them um so so we we have a good enlist pile uh, i i'm more confident in that uh, extend is pretty is pretty tight uh, so if you are in that you know that's probably an early conversation you want to have well, again, important time to be making sure they're they're in contact with their local uh, agency. Yeah, yep. I know these guys probably talk to uh, guys at least once a day, uh, get getting through this, you know, together and getting getting you where you want to be and, and kind of discussing the historical yield data when you should switch, help you, helping you make those decisions. Yeah, it's always good to get that information. Jesse Mock with us, field agronomist with Pioneer. That's our Pioneer agronomy update.